A lot of people hate white people these days. It seems to be a popular kind of idea in the culture. And since I am one of the swarthy Sicilian people, a racially liminal, ethnically ambiguous sort of fellow, I guess white, but you know, there's a conversation to be had. I consider myself an almost impartial observer of this phenomenon. Take it away. So I recently got a lot of new followers, most of which seem to be white. Let's do a little rundown, baby. I don't like white people. I'm not going to follow you back. Please. Please. No. That's pretty racist, but. I'm not a nice person, but I am a kind person. I learned that from Mickey Kendall in her book, Hood Feminism. I sort of think it's the opposite. I, I bet she is a nice person, but not a kind person. Alan Bloom made fun of this word nice in his book, The Closing of the American Mind. He said, the, the best thing I can say about American college students today is that they're nice, which is also the worst thing you can say about them because it means just glib, shallow, superficial, but, but not really partaking of charity. So if this woman's going to come out and say, I hate white people, I'm not going to follow you back, uh, you guys are terrible, but I'm really nice. Tee hee hee. I'm really... I'm, I'm not nice. But I'm kind. No, you are nice. You are glib and you are superficial. But you don't seem to have very much charity. I'm kind to people who are kind to this body. If you are not kind to this body, I will say some not nice words to you and then I will block you. I don't value white people's feelings, emotions, or bodies over my own. Oh, no. <laughs> so if you came here thinking that you were going to get to talk about yourself, if you came here thinking that anything was going to be about you... You're confused, and you can go. I'm really f good at reading through comments that people send with niceties. Meaning, if you're really racist, but you just say it in a really nice way, I'm gonna know. I don't like when white people explain things about themselves in my comment section when I'm trying to talk about racism. I think I get this now. This is just a kind of porn, right? If you are a white person, and you are following this black lady's rants about how much she hates white people, it probably just titillates you doesn't it? I've known guys, some friends of mine even, who really seem to like it when women are mean to them. It's just too good. You gotta give oh, women the love. It's just too good. <laughs> Drake, it's just too you. good. And they just really like it. I think, why are you allowing this woman to say and do this? To, oh, I, you know, what am I going to do? They seem to get a kick out of it. <laughs> and so that's what this is. Okay, this is not a serious disputation on the politics of race. This is a kind of porn for self-flagellating white people. But I, I think I get it. There are infrastructures of harm that intersect with racism. Your personal experience as a white person, regardless of what other marginalized identities you hold, is not what I'm talking about, and my comment section is never the place for that. Unfortunately, I have to spell out these rules because historically, y'all f*** things up. I kind of like what she says here. She says, even if you check other intersectional boxes, even if you're marginalized in some other way, I don't care. If you're white, you're dead. You're dead to me. Because the way intersectionality operates today is if you can check any box, you'll get some points. It's just, if you can't check any box, if you're a straight white man who knows that he's a man, you're the devil. But if you can, if you can say, well, but I'm gay. I'm gay. That's the Pete Buttigieg strategy, is he's the blandest, whitest guy you ever saw in your whole life. But he can say, well, I'm gay, and so he's a good person. If he weren't gay, he'd be an evil person. But because he's gay, he's a good person. But what this woman is doing, she's really ratcheting the resentment up to 11 because she's saying, no, I don't care if you check every other box. If you are white, I hate you. What's your favorite name to call white people? I've seen some of the most creative names on this app, but this one from one of my favorite mutuals absolutely takes the cake. This is why we have so much hesitation when it comes to calling ghost crickets allies. Because girl, what is that? Ghost crickets. I saw one of the names on there was Flower Rangers. I don't know. That's kind of funny. I don't really have a problem with that. But I don't have a problem with racial insults if they're made in jest. I think it's totally fine. You can say, I think you can make a joke about whatever race of people or almost really any attribute. And if it's made in good faith and charity, I think it's totally fine. Now, of course, if I <laughs> ever were to say even the most charitable, obvious joke about any of the sacred unspeakable, privileged races of people, I would be cast into the outer darkness where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth. But I don't, I don't take offense to that. It's kind of funny. Ghost cricket? <gasps> I don't know. It's kind of funny. More on that in just one second. First, though, head on over to expressvpn.com slash MichaelYT. It is extremely important to protect your online privacy with a VPN. Choosing a VPN that you trust is equally as important. 
ExpressVPN is my favorite VPN. It is super easy to install on all of my devices, phone, laptop, you can put it on your tablet. You click one button, you are protected. Extremely straightforward and I can say with full confidence that ExpressVPN is the best VPN on the market. Number one, ExpressVPN doesn't log your online activity. They've developed a trusted server technology, makes it impossible for their servers to store any data at all. Number two, speed. ExpressVPN does not slow down your user experience. You can even stream HD videos with zero buffering. Three, ExpressVPN is incredibly easy to use. Just fire up the app and tap one button to connect. It's not just me saying this. Business Insider, The Verge, and many other tech journals rate ExpressVPN the number one VPN in the world. Protect yourself with a VPN I trust. Use expressvpn.com slash MichaelYT today. Get three months free in a one-year package. E-X-P-R-E-S-S-V-P-N.com slash MichaelYT. ExpressVPN.com slash MichaelYT. A lot of white allies and accomplices ask, how can they support black and indigenous people of color? And sometimes I really don't know what to say, but here's one easy way. Just don't have babies. <laughs> oh, man. That is a racist. Yes. I am racist. Have you ever heard the term white genocide? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Like QAnon or any of these other things. I see it pop up from the left talking about the right. And they say, These crazy right-wingers believe that left-wing people want the white people to go extinct. And you say, Oh, really? Okay, well, all right. All right. Why did I tune into CNN today? But then, here's the crazy part, is you tune in to some left-winger, and he says, I want the white people to go extinct. <laughs> or, or you tune into academic discourse dating back to the mid-2000s out of left-wing political science institutions and circles. And they would say, the way that we're going to win is by the demographic decline of the white people in the United States. And this is published in a lauded, very popular political science text. And then talked about in the New York Times, and then talked about on CNN, and then talked about on all sorts of left-wing papers. But then if you just repeat back the words that they said to you, you're called a crazy conspiracy theorist, racist, phobic, evil. Okay. Has anyone ever actually like definitively addressed or answered the question of why white people smell like pennies when it rains? <laughs> like this is not even like. Do we? <laughs> I don't. I didn't know. That. I think this is true of every race. I don't know about pennies in the rain, but races, which tend to have cultures, there tends to be at least a somewhat significant overlap between race and culture, tend to have attributes that are visible and that sometimes you can hear in terms of sounds of language. Can't understand a word of it. And smells. Of course, if you go hang out with your Indian buddy and he's in an Indian home and they have Indian food and they do Indian things, There's a fair chance that it's going to smell a little bit more like curry than if you were visiting your Italian or Irish friend, okay? And so the idea that, diff that, that white people have a certain smell to them, yeah, I guess that's true. I assume every race and culture has peculiarities of, of sense. It's just like a statement of fact. White <laughs> people be smelling like pennies and quarters when they get wet, like when it rains. And it, it seems to be, it does seem to be specific to white people. Does anyone know why? I don't know why that one, that one tickled me so much. Okay, all right, I gotta, we gotta move on. This is not like racism, it is racism. Anti-fatness is rooted in anti-blackness. And the reason why people are pursuing thinness is because they're pursuing proximity to whiteness. Mm -hmm. The reason why people hate fat people. There's actually something to this point. Uh, no, anti-fatness is not rooted in anti-blackness or anything like that. But I do remember during COVID, black women have higher rates of death from all sorts of problems, you know, and, and all sorts of medical conditions. The Libs presented this as an argument for the white supremacy of the medical system. But that's not the case. It's, it's because black women tend to be obese at much higher rates than, than white women are or women of other races. So the comorbidity is not blackness. It's obesity. Paradoxically, we're told this is a terrible problem. We have to fix this problem. But then when you try to fix the problem, you say, okay, well, maybe, you know, you need to lose some weight. We we'll say, well, that's anti-blackness. Black people are, are oppressed because they are more likely to be obese. But if you try to stop black people from being obese, that is an example of oppression. So it just becomes this circle and it never ends. Keep going. 
and appearing curvy or bigger is associated with blackness, especially black women. And that's why they're discriminated in the workplace, um, overly sexualized. And this has gone back for centuries and centuries. Overly sexualized. There was another controversy that came out, I remember, uh, over the dating apps, which is that on the dating apps, black women are swiped at a lower rate, I guess, than, uh, than other people on the dating apps. And this was called a an example of discrimination and racism or whatever. But but, that, but which is it? <laughs> is it that black women are over-sexualized or under-sexualized? In the case of obesity, as this woman is describing, is it that obesity is looked on as being repulsive? I'm a big tub of lied and you have every reason to be ashamed of me. Or that obesity is looked on as being extremely sexually attractive? Which is it? She's, she's making contradictory points about the same people. And so th if this were a problem, there would be no way to fix it because anything you do would be called evil and racist and discriminatory. So you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Capitalism, sexism, racism, it all comes back to white supremacy, which is the foundation of the fabric of America and rules every sector and aspect of our society. Well, there it is. It's just every problem is white supremacy. Even problems that are in opposition to one another, somehow white supremacy is the cause of all of it. Because that's not the conclusion of her investigation. That would be the premise. And so... When the only tool you got is a hammer, every problem starts to look like a nail. My favorite video is obviously the quarters and pennies one. It's not because I think it's the craziest one. I think it's probably the least crazy one. I don't know. I wouldn't be surprised if, if two non-white people, white people, have this particular smell in the rain. <laughs> like pennies. I don't know, it's just really, really funny. And that's my favorite one. There you go. There you have it. See you next time. I'm singing in the rain, just singing in the rain. What a glorious feeling, I'm happy again.